thanks. All right. This is the part where the audience is thinking, follow that, white boy. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about my outfit. I know it's a little formal, but uh, the airline lost one of my bags. I don't want to say the name of the airline. Let's just say it rhymes with Bear Wanada. <laughs> King of the death announcement. In the unlikely event of a water landing, in the unlikely event of a loss of cabin pressure, I'm always sitting in the back of the plane with the peanuts going, you know, if it's so unlikely, it hardly seems worth bringing it up and scaring the shit out of everyone. <laughs> I mean, for that matter, you may as well bring up every horrifying, unlikely event. And if you just want to be cruel, get on the airplane system. Hi, this is the captain. In the unlikely event that I should run bare ass through the main cabin, wearing a World War I Kaiser helmet, singing, clang, 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 went the trolley, the drinks are on me. I mean, if you just want to be cruel, you know, just come out. <laughs> Hi, you know, in the unlikely event that I'm not really an airline pilot, but a psycho who has the captain tied to a chair in my basement, I'll be pointing the plane directly at the ground. In the unlikely event, you should survive impact and need to eat your fellow passengers for sustenance. May I suggest the fat guy in 17J with a nice Chardonnay. <laughs> in the unlikely event of a real emergency, James Earl Jones will be in the plane going, Mother of God. That's apparently a requirement in a tragedy these days. I saw him last night at, uh, on one of the late night movies, James Earl Jones. That's all I watch is the late night because I'm a comic, that's what I watch. They have everything you need on television three o'clock in the morning. Let's say you're a guy and you're going bald. Every two channels, a cure. <laughs> you flip around, there's always a guy, man, are you afraid that one day your wife will be running her fingers through your hair and you won't be home? Well, <laughs> 500 bucks for this toupee and you can swim with it on. There's the guy, swimming with a hairpiece on. <laughs> You don't like him? Two channels over, there's a guy spraying hair out of a cat. You see this guy? This Ron Popeil guy carrying on like he invented the light bulb, this guy. Shh, it's amazing, Shh, it's unbelievable. And you're in front of the TV going, it's paint, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> you're painting your head, Thomas Edison. I could have thought of that. And he has the balls to look right into the camera and say, Shh, your girlfriend will never know that you sprayed this shit all over your head. And I'm always thinking, really? Well, then why buy it? You know, if your girlfriend is that much of a doorknob that she doesn't know, you have suddenly Dutch boyed your skull black, saved the money, you could fool her with anything. I mean, you could have antlers, she wouldn't catch on. <laughs> See, your hair looks different today. It's the same hair I've always had. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> I just moosed it at all. They have everything on late night. Late night TV is the place to be if you're overweight. Do we have any fat people here? I didn't think so, let's move forward. They have all different types of weight loss people. Richard Simmons, Susan Powder, if you like the aggressive type. Hi, I'm Susan Powder, I've lost 1,786 pounds and somehow managed to remain totally unattractive. Why not take personal appearance advice from me, a woman who looks like Ross Perot's lesbian sister? <laughs> Which I guess is kind of harsh to say, but I mean, you know, people who are overweight have a problem and they, they lie to them, these people. They go, it's not your fault. You're a victim of Klingon obesity rage. <laughs> and I'm always sitting there going, you know, when I was a kid, I was kind of a fat little kid for a while. And after careful research, I came to the conclusion, ah -ha! I'm eating too much fucking food. <laughs> Dip me in mustard and call me hot dog. Who would have thought it? You know, somebody needs to be honest with the large people of America. You know who should have a late night diet plan? Some idiot from my old neighborhood where I grew up in Brooklyn. The Joey Falco diet plan. Just a regular moron who's too stupid to be diplomatic. Comes right on television and it's on the shirt. Hey, how you doing, folks? Thanks for tuning in. Hey, listen, my name's Joey Falco. If you're overweight, try my diet plan. It's called Stop Eating, You Fat Bastard. <laughs> Let me explain how it works. These are proteins, these are carbohydrates. Therefore, stop eating, you fat bastard. <laughs> now, you may be wondering, am I a fat bastard? Here are some scientific ways to tell. When you go to a buffet, do the waitresses put on riot hats? 
Do you find yourself short of breath after combing your hair? When you stand up to pee, you gotta move your chin out of the way? Chances are you'll let yourself go. Send 79 cents for my tape. It ain't video or audio. You know what it is? Scotch tape. Take a piece and put it over your mouth so the fucking ring things don't get in. Try it for 30 days. Act now and I'll send my other tape. Stop smoking, you stupid bastard. You gotta order these tapes, man, because even if... <laughs> order them. If they rip you off, doesn't care. You can get a lawyer. Late night TV. <laughs> Some of your finest lawyers in the world have a commercial at five o'clock in the morning. And you know this guy is a really good attorney. You know how you can tell? He always has a big stack of legal books behind his head. <laughs> Hello, I'm Bernard Shapiro of the law firm of Dewey, Beat Him and Run. Are you a person between the ages of three and 116? <laughs> Chances are you're entitled to a huge cash settlement. Have you fallen down? Have you been in an accident? Have you woken up in a dental chair with your pants around your ankles and your head in the spit sink? You could be entitled to a huge cash settlement. Have you ever been outside your home? Have you ever used a consumer product? Have you ever had contact with another human being? You could be in line for big money. I'll fight for you like I fought for this young woman. I was standing on the 15th floor of an office building when there was a car accident outside. I wasn't even involved. Bernard Shapiro got me $16 million. <laughs> My hat's off to you, Bernard. That's right, I'm Bernard Shapiro. And I'll fight for you if you've been injured on the job. Like this typical New York cab driver. I was driving along in my cab on Fifth Avenue. <laughs> Suddenly, I hit a pothole. The plastic Jesus popped off the dashboard, hit me above the eye, causing the tiniest scratch. Bernard Shapiro got me $600 million. <laughs> well, my turban is off to you, Bernard. That's right, I'm Bernard Shapiro. And I'll fight for you if you've been injured by your employer like this man. I was working in a chemical plant when I began to have a string of suspicious health problems. In one month, I got heart disease, bone disease, brain disease, malaria, diphtheria, water on the knee, water on the brain, water on the floor, pneumonia, omonia, amonia, get down on you. I got diarrhea, pyorrhea, gonorrhea, rhea perlman. I got yellow fever, scarlet fever, pink eye, blue balls, I got tennis elbows, swimmer's ear, leprosy, pleurisy, jealousy. <laughs> I got PMS, TMJ, HBO, Nick at Night, Showtime, ESPN, and occasional lower back pain. But not Shapiro got me nine billion dollars. And that's when I bought Bernard Shapiro's law firm. That motherfucker works for me now. Hey, Bernard, get out of here. That's right. That's how effective I am. That man is now my employer. Call me now and I'll send some bullshit complimentary hairspray. So, late night seat, thank you. Hey, oh, thanks. Who's oh, shutting him up? It's like, even the referee in football has his own microphone so he can humiliate the players when they break a rule. They stop the entire game so the referee can press a button on his belt, activating a giant sound system to point the guy out who did it and humiliate him on national television. It's totally unnecessary. Here's the referee. The reason we stopped the game, the reason we're all hanging around out here in the snow, not doing anything for the last five minutes, is because some people don't seem to know the rules. Isn't that right? Number 71. 71, I hope your mother's watching. Can't blame the ref, though. You would do it. It's a human thing to want to be heard. Let's say you're an ordinary football referee. An average man, about 65, 70 years old. <laughs> you're not making the big millions like the football players are, but you got one thing they don't have, a button on the belt. And all you have to do is click it on it. For the first time in your whole boring life, the entire nation is hanging on every word that comes out of your mouth. What would you do? If I was him, I'd stop the game every five, 10 minutes just to talk about my own personal problems. <laughs> The hell with the game. If you were him, wouldn't you be going, Tch! there was no penalty. This has nothing to do with the game, the players, or the National Football League. I need to talk. <laughs> I can't keep this up any longer. I feel like a fraud out here. I mean, sure, I'm the ref, but who am I to judge these players? I mean, what if I'm wrong? Look at some of the choices I've made in my own life. 
63 years old and I'm a fucking referee. Uh, I'll be honest with you, lots of times that I'm out here, I'm not even thinking about football. My wife's getting fat as a house. I love my kids, but if I had to do it again, ooh, I'd wear a condom. It just all goes by so fast in life, doesn't it? One minute you're in high school, and the next minute you're watching your prostate like a hawk. Anybody who says these are the golden years can kiss my wrinkled ass, Buster. I got hair growing out of my ears, for God's sake. I got cataracts the size of ashtrays. I got to pee every five minutes. I walk into a room. I don't know what the hell I went in there for. <laughs> that goddamn bursitis now. I wake up, takes me a half an hour to put on my eyeglasses just so I can look for my teeth to tell my wife to find my fucking hair. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm just blowing smoke. You know what's really bothering me? I just kind of feel like I'm a woman trapped in a man's body. You ever dress up in your wife's underwear when she's not home? Damn, I love it. Give me some thong panties and some perfume. I am one happy ref fuck football with a stick. Well, I feel a lot better. We better get back to the game now. First down. <laughs> 